Hi everyone, it's Sandra from Sandra Bianco Photography, and I'm so excited to announce that in collaboration with Greater Than Gatsby, we've come out with the new Innocence Collection 2 workflow. In addition to that, we also upgraded the Innocence Retouch, which now has um, a couple of different things in it, which includes Flawless Skin, which is one of my favorites. So basically, all you need to do is if you already own the Retouch set, you just need to log into your account on www.greaterthangatsby.com and just upgrade the folder that's already in there. And it's free. You don't have to do anything else. If you don't already have this collection, I highly suggest watching my next couple of videos because um, you just may want to buy the bundle after you see this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with gorgeous little Kinsley here. And I'm going to go um, get started in the retouch set. And we're going to go down to this frequency separation flawless skin. We're going to go ahead and hit play. And when this comes up, you're going to see the two layers that pop up, flawless blend and flawless clone. I usually start with flawless blend. So once you're in that box, you're going to go grab your lasso tool and you want your feathering to be about 20 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up just a little bit to show you. So what I want to do is make a selection around where I'm trying to correct. I am just trying to really blend in the skin tone. Once I have my selection, I'm going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to look at my radius. It's set. I usually have it set around 30 um, pixels, but if it's a smaller area that you're trying to correct, you're going to need to reduce that. If it's a larger area, you're going to need to bring that up just a little bit. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just going to hit OK, and then I'm going to go and make another selection on the next side of her face here. And this time, because I've already selected my Gaussian Blur and set it, all I have to do is go to Filter, Gaussian Blur. You can see where how that corrected that. I'm going to go ahead and do another selection around her forehead. Again, filter, Gaussian blur, and another small selection just around her chin area. So I'm just trying to blend in all these tones. Filter, Gaussian blur, voila. Then we're gonna go ahead and jump into our flawless clone. So I'm gonna grab my clone stamp, and I wanna make sure on this that my flow is set to about 24%. And this is great because it leaves the texture on the skin, but I also acts as more of an eraser. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my selection, and on, I'm on a Mac, so I'm just hitting the Option key and using my tablet to get a selection. So I'm just going to grab a nice clean skin tone next to where I want to correct these hairs. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that, and I'm just going to start painting that on. And you can see it's leaving the texture on the skin because we are on a transparent layer. So I can still... I still have all of her freckles there, which is really nice. So I'm just going to go around the image where I know I want to make a few corrections here. I'm going to go up and get rid of these little fine hairs around her on her forehead. And I also like to sometimes clean up the little darkness that's inside of the eyes there. So I'm just going to make a nice selection right next to that area here and just go into there a little bit. To those deep pockets and then you can also use this to correct dark circles as well underneath the eyes she doesn't really have much but just to sh um, demonstration purposes I'm just going to grab a nice tone underneath and just paint that on just a little bit okay so once we're done with that we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go down and please keep in mind that this is my workflow so I'm just showing you exactly what I would do on this particular image I'm gonna jump down into skin tone fresh and because I backlit this image um, and I underexposed her skin a little bit more than I normally do, I want to really bring up some light in her face. So I'm going to go ahead and select Skin Tone Fresh, hit Continue, and I'm going to change the opacity to 100% because I know I want to get some nice brightness all around her. So I'm going to go ahead and move my brush opacity back up to 100%. And just go ahead and start painting this on her skin, even a little bit on her hair and on her dress to brighten that up. Okay. So that looks pretty good. So you can see what a big difference that made. It just brightened things up and left that nice backlighting on her hair and all of that 
um, just by brightening up her face. So that was wonderful. And now we're going to go into Skin Tone Blush, which I'm going to go ahead and use on her cheeks. I'm just going to go ahead and paint that on nice and big and soft. And then I like to reduce my opacity. So I'm just eyeballing that. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my black brush, just pressing the X to get back and forth. And I'm just going to go around where I know I went over. I just prefer to put on the blush with a big soft white brush. So it, it, it acts more like a gradient when it goes on and it's not a harsh line. Um, again, that's personal preference. And I can take this down just a little bit if I think I went over too much. Okay, then we're going to skip down. All of your color characters are right here if you need to use those. A lot of times I will go back at the end of my image if I feel like, oh, maybe there's a little bit of red around her eyes or something like that. I would use the soft red reducer, um, but they're, they're there for you if you need them. We're going to skip down into base eye foundation. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my brush at 100%. And I'm going to get just make it small enough to go inside of her eyeball. And this really is nice to brighten up the eye whites and the catch lights. And then you, so you can see what that does. And I'm going to go ahead and just take that down just a little bit. because It's a little bit too white. Okay, then we're going to skip down and go into Iris Soft Sharpen, which I use as an all-over eye sharpener. So I use it on the lashes and also I'm just going to go ahead and get my brush big enough to go over the entire eyeball. And just swipe over each eye once. And I usually put that on at 100% and leave it on at 100% because I like a nice sharp eye. We're going to go ahead and skip down into the mouth makeover brushes. I'm going to go ahead and use Lips Red Rosy. And I'd like to put this on as well at 100%. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my opacity down to my liking. But I like to just see where I'm going with this and make sure I'm staying in the lines and getting, getting in those creases and all. So staying at 100% on this is beneficial for that purpose. And then I'll just go ahead and take that down. I don't want it to necessarily um, make it look like she has makeup on. I just want it to look like she's got just a little bit of a hint of color on her lips. Okay, and then we're going to skip down into the finishing brushes, which is new to the set as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into my Dodge and Burn. So hit Continue. And when your Dodge and Burn folder pops up, you're going to have two folders in there, two layers. One is for burning the shadows, and the other is to dodge the highlights. So for the burn the shadows, you want to make sure that you're black, you have a black brush selected, and you're going to go into your brush mode here, and you're going to go into Darken. I'm going to go ahead and reduce my flow down to anywhere from, say, 15 to 20 percent. Um, be easy on it. You could always reduce the opacity over here as well. But I just want to give her a little bit of um, darkness, a little bit under her chin here, just to add a little contouring and maybe just a little bit around her hairline. So you can see I'm, I do this very easy and light. I don't like any really harsh lines on my images. And then I can also use this to darken up her lashes a bit. So this is kind of a one step to make anything darker that you really want to. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and go into the highlights, dodge the highlights. And this time I want to make sure I have a white brush and I'm going to go and move my brush mode to lighten. So, and again, I'm just going to stay, keep my flow down um, anywhere from you know, 10 to 20 percent. It's just all going to depend on your image and really how much you want to place on there. But I am just going to go ahead and go over the bridge of her nose and do a little bit on the ball of her cheek. Sometimes I'll even go up into the eyebrow and just do a little bit on the arch of the brow there. A tiny bit here up on the forehead. So you can see I'm getting my brush bigger. So I want it to look nice and natural. And then I'll sometimes go on the cupid bow here. I'm just going to go down and go up there. And again, if you think that that's a little bit too much, you can simply just take your opacity down a little bit. You can see there what that did, just doing a little bit of dodging and then uh, darkening the shadows. So it adds some depth to her face. And then one of the last things I'm going to do is I really want to bring her freckles back. So I'm going to go into sharpen the details. And I'm going to bring my brush back to normal mode and my flow back to 100. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and go over her sweet little freckles here. And if I think that's a little bit too much, I could just go ahead and simply take my opacity down. And then I, I'm also going to go and just take my opacity down, way down on my brush. And I'm just going to go over her eyes again. I love a tack sharp eye. So this is how I get it. Voila. Okay. So let's take a snapshot of this. Let me get, grab my history real quick. Okay, so this is the before the retouch, after the retouch, before and after. And you can see that the new flawless skin that we put in here, it really keeps the skin looking more real, not too overly smoothed, and a lot of the texture is still on the skin, which is what I love about it so much. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Please remember to watch the next couple of videos, and if you would like to purchase this collection, please go to www.greaterthangatsby.com. And I really hope you all enjoy it as much as I am. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.